Hey guys, so it's uh, what day 46 of MCO, and as you can see, it's a hot day out there. Uh, being stuck at home, right? Uh, so, certainly can drive anybody crazy this kind of hot weather. And normally, most people's solution would be to switch on the air conditioning, but you on air con means what electricity bill go up. So, uh, yesterday, my wife uh, was on the internet, was on YouTube. And she came across this rather interesting solution, right? She saw that some guy actually put a fan, okay, uh, to uh, at the door or window and pointed the fan outwards. So, uh, what this solution has done is that it has effectively uh, made the the house feel a lot more cooling. Why? Because the fan here is driving air from the inside. Okay, it's driving air to flow out. Okay, so it's actually basically sucking air out outside, and then uh, it creates a low pressure zone inside the house. Okay, and that draws in turn draws air flowing, you know, from other parts of the house to there. And uh, I'll say it works. Okay, it works. Uh, now suddenly now this with this solution here the house feels a lot airier and a lot more pleasant so guys if you guys are you know sitting at home feeling very hot this is a solution worth trying right put a ceiling put one of your stand fans at either your main door or your windows point it outwards and uh, yeah and feel the breeze inside the house Hi guys, how's everybody doing? Hope you guys are doing okay. So, question, are you guys ready? Uh, as I record this, tomorrow is the transition where we move from, where we shift from movement control order to conditional movement control order. Basically, as what the Prime Minister said, Last Friday, uh, beginning Monday, 4th May, we will have some uh, sectors of the economy open again for business and allowed to operate at full capacity. Now, of course, this naturally sparks a lot of debate. Okay, uh, There are those who question, do, are, we, are we ready for this? You know, will opening up so quickly uh, lead to another wave of infections and once again overwhelm our our exhausted frontliners. But there's also the other side of the equation where we have people out there, uh, daily wage earners, who <clears throat> because of the MCO have gone six weeks. Queenie, so... So of course there are many people out there who are uh, many six weeks, eight weeks, no income. Okay. And you know, is for some of us, okay, like I mean I'm one I, I consider myself fortunate that Iwo is still uh Bobby is still able to keep the business running and keep and, and keep our pay and you know and, and we keep our paycheck. But I understand that there are a lot of people out there who who are not as fortunate. It's just like I remember early on during this MCO, right? Um, I remember reading this article. <clears throat> this person, uh, somebody was writing about how uh, even though now we work from home, uh, they are feeling you know overworked because now they have to cope with kids at home. Uh, they have to, and at the same time, they still have to to to. To deal with deliverables and they find that they are now working longer hours than usual i remember when i read that i was thinking to myself i mean i am i i I've, in a way i feel the same but at the same time i'm gratified that 
there's even I'm I'm am even employed to begin with. Okay, I mean I'm gra I'm grateful that there's a company there to in a way overwork me. Okay, because it means that I'm still gainfully employed. Okay, and uh, with a with a with a good chance that by the time we emerge from this crisis, there's still a company that that is there that is that is up and running and keeping me employed. So to me, that is that is really the most important thing, right? And uh, yeah, so so that's that. But you see, there's there and there are a lot of people out there who who are thinking damn they wish they could be overworked too so just so that they have money in their wallets to put food on the table all right so um in a way i under i in a way i do feel that the announcement to loosen the uh, the movement control order to be too abrupt okay because the way i look at it is I do think it is inevitable that uh, you have to open up. You can't sustain the lockdown forever. But I think what a more palatable approach I would say is to, to announce, to have announced last Friday that, you know, guys, we are, we are up to, we are, we are up to, to, to uh, what you call it, phase four, all right? and uh we've got to look we have got to look into preserving the economy and uh and we've got to be prepared so you know by by 12th of may as this mco phase 4 runs it runs its course we've got this is this 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 is going to happen okay and actually i would have preferred that if they lifted up or they if they open up <coughs> the movement control order by zone you know rather than decide you know which sector what sop and all that all right i um i, I would have I, I i would think that uh, and but the thing is actually some of the states are doing it you know, like i think Kedah, slango penang uh sabah sarawak these five states i think i heard Kelantan or something a few states they have said that they will not be fully opening up as prescribed by the federal government okay uh yeah so some of them will be will be each so some some states will be having their own variation of the of the so-called conditional movement control order okay um but yeah i mean i think it's it's really about what what the health dg said that it's balancing between life and livelihood so those of us who are in the position that we are still earning money, we can say that you know, uh, no life. You 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 cannot replace uh, life with however much money that you can. But at the same time, at the other end of the spectrum, are people who are just struggling to scrape money to pay for a plate of rice on the table. So, uh, I mean, uh, whoever that needs to work. All I can say is, uh, if you have to go to work, stay safe out there. Uh, be responsible. Practice your practice good social distancing. Practice good hygiene. All right. If you see another person uh, in your vicinity, give the give each other a wide berth. Okay, uh, because you do not know if you are carrying the virus or the other person is carrying the virus. You do not want to establish a chain. Of infection between you guys so <clears throat> in a way I think the responsibility is in our hands now okay uh, in a way it's good lah. I think we, we should not be always say government should do this government should do that sometimes I think we should also look into ourselves and say what can we do what can we contribute how can we uh, how can we play our part to help our nation through this crisis okay so uh, yeah anyways um, all I have to say regarding the opening up of the MC uh, regarding the easing off of the MCO is uh, stay safe be responsible uh, if you can still afford to work from home keep working from home okay and uh, for company owners 
you may want to consider that unless it is absolutely necessary you should keep your employees at home okay because what the last thing that you want would be to have a chain of infection within your company and that immediately cripples your workforce immediately All right and of course there's also the debate of uh, of the uh, the uh, what you call it uh, day, the, the daycare daycares whether should daycare open or not uh, personally I, I I think it was just yesterday or day before yesterday that I paid the fees for my my daughter's daycare but uh, I think even if they open or so we won't be sending sending my daughter in anytime soon uh, simply because I think I think first of all I think the teachers will will appreciate it all right you you, you, you because the spirit of the MC is that you want to reduce gathering of people as much as possible so um, I think the daycare facilities usage of the daycare facilities really should be limited to those who uh, husband and wife both are really you know uh, working in the essential services that that yeah that there's absolutely no, that they have absolutely no alternative okay uh like for but for us my uh i think we can we can make do without the daycare for now but we'll still continue to pay our fees because i would still want a daycare for my daughter to go back to once all this is over lah, okay so if i withhold payment to my day to my daughter's daycare uh, it's just going to they are just going to run eventually run into a tight spot and and then by the time crisis is over, pop suddenly I have to look for a new daycare for my daughter. So that's absolutely something I don't want. And uh, yeah, as I said, everybody, we have got to play our part to take care of each other. Okay. Now, uh, and also there's some quick comments on the moratorium thing. Now, uh, Kenny Wong sent uh, 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 showed us, okay, uh, sent us a, a, what you call it, a, his story, okay, um, once again, we cannot disclose the name of his bank, okay, uh, unless we have reached out to his bank for comment, which we haven't, so we are not going to go through that trouble. Lah. But uh, his story is that uh, he was offered the moratorium, and from day one, he opted out, okay, and there is also, uh, and he received an SMS confirmation from his bank that he has opted out. But later on he checked in and uh, he, he he checked his uh his car loan uh, accounts and he found that the standing his standing instructions have halted so uh so he he had to manually bank in his last two installments all right uh so the advice here really is guys um i think it's important right now right before we blame the banks i think we also have to understand one thing the we are right now this whole mco the whole moratorium thing um it's unprecedented it's an unprecedented situation okay and the moratorium involves a change in the status quo for many 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 customers so um inevitably you know as they make the switch in the system right to decide whether customer a opt in customer b opt out c opt in d opt out there will be a few odd glitches here and there and i think it's important that we as uh consumers we check with our banks okay we check and we ask our bank our our, our bank say that what is our status okay if if you're if those of you with banks that who's uh, what you call it, whose banking app is able to check whether yours has a uh, moratorium in or out, go and check it, okay? So then after that, from there, you decide whether you still want to continue with the moratorium or you want to take it up and pay um, pay your installments. And I think the advice, the common advice now is if you are, um, if you are still earning money, it's it's good that you pay okay it, it's good that you pay because why why suddenly lose that chunk of 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 money to interest unless unless you are such a skilled investor that if you take this chunk of money you can invest in um 
you can invest in another you can put it in another investment and make and make in more than enough money to cover the the difference or you can check out what other used car to buy anyway so, sorry I, I'm, I'm digressing uh okay anyways yeah so that's all i have to say about uh about the moratorium and now let's look back into q a okay i think how much time have i spent on this ah uh? my god i've spent 30 min 13 minutes babbling okay so uh winston xiao i'm driving a 2006 honda city of a budget of 90 to 100k should i stretch my budget for uh to go for a full spec x70 for tech feature or a used 2015 2 liter mazda 6 for around 85k or do you have other recommendation i see that 2012 uh 2013 f30 also around this price range should i go for it uh okay now uh budget of 90 to 100k if you are going for a full spec x70 that is about 120k so you have 20k over budget um but you are leaving a very large gap okay now so 2015 2.0 mazda 6 for 85k um i would say 85k you can actually either look at a 2017 mazda 6 or you can even uh go for a 2.5 which uh, is better equipped gives you better performance okay uh i'm seeing one here that is going for one that is listed for one hundred and ten thousand. okay now uh, this one I think is still something you can consider because listed one hundred ten thousand, but you can nego to one hundred or one hundred five. I think all right, and and let's see. You see the thing is that because you are already uh, thinking of going for uh, a full spec X seventy that is one hundred twenty k, but if let's say but see that you see for hundred k, your budget for the X seventy gets you only. The standard model which is not bad in terms of features it's not bad so that's also worth considering okay but uh if you're going for a master 6 with that budget try going for i think 2015 2.0 uh a bit too conservative for your budget you can with that budget what you have here you definitely can squeeze more go for a 2017 car uh which will be right now at the tail end of its warranty maybe you even get one free service uh at the end of it okay so something for you to think about all right and uh or do you have other recommendation or do you have other recommendation 2012 2013 f30 also around this price range should i go for it um actually if you have once again around the 100k mark right you can consider a 2015 320i lci that comes with the newer generation b48 engine more refined uh and a more updated suspension setup and also 2015 the car probably just came out of warranty so uh still in reasonable reasonable condition okay and 2015 car you can also you can also get a longer loan bigger financing margin yep so uh they're good choices but 2015 mazda 6 2.0 or 2012 2013 f30 you can you can go and tekan for a lot less lah all right because i'm skipping all the comments on the moratorium and i'm going straight to i'm just jumping to address all the car buying advice so okay mat deco mat dek uh need to buy parts for my car appreciate if you can tell me the spare part shop name the undercarriage parts for your e39 okay i bought the undercarriage parts from bavarian auto that's one uh supplier very reputable long long time known supplier for bmw parts the other uh, supplier you can consider is bowman auto in uh, jan ipo or you uh then my installation i had all the parts installed in uh, rival auto as detailed in my previous video uh okay comment on my first e39 video by zaza what's the mileage bro and how many owners lovely taken care and loved by prius i suppose well the car mileage at that time was 138 thousand kilometers was it uh, no hundred forty eight thousand kilometers uh i think i'm the the fourth owner or the fifth owner uh it was well taken care of the previous owner took care of it pretty well 
All right, uh, when we jacked the car up uh, during the inspection phase, the undercarriage was in very, very good shape. So, uh, yeah, uh, well taken care of. But it's just that uh, I think for the last four years under the previous owner, because the previous owner, I was told out the story by the dealer, previous owner worked in oil and gas, okay, worked in platform, has seven cars. The reason why he sold that car was because wife Bebel. That's the story I was told lah, okay. So uh, he's actually not driven the car much for the last four years of its ownership. That's why, right, when I look through the service records, uh, uh, the first two, three years, yes, the car was used at a rate of about maybe 10, 15,000 kilometers per year. But slowly, 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 the usage was, was, was becoming less and less per year. I think that's why he considered to sell it. Okay, uh, let's jump, to, jump in on... Uh, Okay, so for sale Santos, my Proton Gen 2 consuming more consumption. How can I get in touch with you? Uh, okay, firstly, are you talking about engine oil consumption or are you talking about fuel consumption? Because if you're talking about bad fuel consumption, that's normal for the Campro engine. But then again, it also de depends on what is your definition of bad fuel consumption. If it's oil consumption, that is not a common problem for Campro engines as far as I know. Okay, a lot of comments on the moratorium videos and uh, Philip Tan If you know any car workshop open on any specific days of the week around Planet Jai during MCO, I have a check engine light illuminating and it concerns me uh, Actually, I, the thing is that even though I stay around Planet Jaya, I don't service my cars around Planet Jaya uh, The last workshop that I know in Planet Jaya closed down So uh, yeah, but I think if you go to Taman Mega, there's this one workshop that Chris V recommends very, uh, very, very strongly. So uh, do and do ask him at his video. All right, uh, in his channel, Mama Rafik Boss one Oren to Baru ya bukan recon kan? He's, this one is referring to a video of mine regard of the GTR. Okay, bro. Uh, Kalau Nissan GTR di Malaysia, eh, sebab model Nissan GTR ni tidak dibawa, okay, secara rasmi oleh uh, edaran Tanjung Motor, mak maknanya tiada unit Nissan GTR serba yang baru dari kilang dijual di Malaysia. Yang ada di pasaran kita semuanya datang dari pasaran Recon itu je. And uh, Gary Ma commented, sensible suggestion for the guy looking to buy the Golf GTI. Uh, hope he'll take the heat and avoid getting himself into financial trouble. More importantly, don't try to circumvent bank loans requirement. If the bank think you won't be able to service the loan, they are probably right. Okay, this is something that uh, I want to address also. Now, now in Bobby, when Bobby uh, gives car buying advice, right? He he's the type that he will he will try to push himself to the limit. So if let's say like he pro he's probably the type that he earns this much under the bank's rating, he earns he he is good enough for let's say to to service four thousand worth of installments. He will try to push five thousand. He's that type of person. But you see the thing is that. It is for him is a driving force whereby it motivates him to work harder and it is something that works well. But the question is this I want to ask people now if you want to do this approach and that's fine. That's fine. But you see the thing is that are you ready to put in the kind of hard work and motivation the way he does? Are you ready to do what it takes? to ensure that every month die die you have the money that you committed for that loan to go or are you the type that you sign for the loan ready then uh, after that right by the time end of the month no money you complain then perhaps that's not for you but if you're the type that you see you are very focused in your objective you you are the type that see okay somehow die die no complain i will make sure this happens and it is the kind of approach that motivates you, go ahead, okay? But that motivation 
is very very important if you want to try this approach very very important pro aki uh, can you give opinion for retiring civil servant i'm currently looking at either 2017 or 2018 viewers at 60,000. what are the alternatives should i up the budget to 80,000 for 2014 2015 camry or accord just want a worry free and low maintenance car and reasonably comfy thanks now firstly 60k for a 2017-2018 city of yours is not worth it because you see the thing is that you are ready to up your budget to 80k 80k you can buy a new city or a vios to start with so that's one thing you can consider uh of course if you if you are willing to go second hand a used camry or a court will offer you a far more pleasant driving experience than a city or a vios and there are plenty of examples uh, on the road and many of these are driven by driven very sedately well taken care of uh, well to do owners so uh, looking for a, a, a good condition unit for these models not difficult at all okay Christopher Tan hi Con I've asked BMW service center that I'm willing to pay for the service cost for the ATF change but their reply is the warranty will be void even though the fluid is changed by them and I kind of feel the gearbox is not smooth and jerking or occur sometime. I'm left with no other option. Uh, which BMW service center did you did you visit? Have you tried another service center? I mean, try different service centers because you have Autobaria, you have Quill, you have Ingress. Ask each one, all right? Ask each one. Uh, especially since you say the gearbox is smooth and not jer and jerking. And honestly, if you're saying gearbox is not smooth and jerking, right, and your car is still under warranty, go and claim warranty. Go and ask them, why is my gearbox uh, jerking and not smooth? Better to ask now while your car is still under warranty than while it's not, okay? Yeah, so actually maybe that's a better approach. Uh, rather than insist on changing fluids, just ask them, why my gearbox jerking? Ah? Right? Uh, yeah. Chi Ho. Bro, which car is better? BMW 330i or Mercedes-Benz C300? I'm looking to buy a pre-owned end of this year. Hopefully, the price will be more attractive. Thanks. Uh, did you ask this question on Bobby's channel as well? Okay, but anyways, uh, to answer your question, the 330i is better built, better handling, but the Mercedes is a better all-rounder. Okay? Um, and the Mercedes is nearer to being replaced. So, uh, if you want to buy a pre-owned, I would say wait for the new one, wait for the next generation one, then this C300 price will drop, pre-owned prices will drop even more, that would be when, when the prices will be more attractive. 330i, uh, 330i, you, the, the prices are already attractive one. If you go BMW premium selection, it won't drop from it won't drop significantly from where the current discounted price is so bmw 330i you go in now versus you go in end of this year the best discounted price will be there about the same but mercedes c300 if you wait for the uh the next generation model to be launched you may see a more substantial drop uh ongen cat just got my car towed to service center and back all within one day to do first service. Volkswagen covered the cost of towing to service center. Decided to do this after watching your SMAX video. Very good. Kudos to Volkswagen uh, Malaysia or the dealership. All right. And uh, I think at that time when the MCA was still tighter, that was really the right way to do it because, it, because firstly, there were restrictions for you to... for. For travel for people travel uh, you know mo no more than one car per, uh, one occupant per car so you can't ask your family member to go to the service to follow you to the service center and drive you back right uh, so definitely sending by towing is the best way in the sense that you just nah tow truck drive the car on the flatbed tow truck send it to the service center bring back you minimize your contact with other people so yeah speaking about my S Max uh Still waiting for the car to be done, uh, but the, the thing is that now with the MCO uh, restrictions a bit eased off, then uh, I can easily get my wife, my wife and I can easily go when the car is ready, 
you can go together, collect the car and, and drive back. Trust GTR commented, uh, double wishbones, best comfort and handling setup, but they are expensive and takes more space. You are correct, and they are also expensive to maintain because, you know, more bushes. Car guy 66 commenting on my 840i uh, and X6 video. Those exterior cut lines are harder to produce, hence the higher price point. My biggest beef with the X series is its underwhelming dash design. I get it's a homage to the previous 8, but boy, is, is it boring and cannot com command that price. Hmm. Well, I wouldn't call it underwhelming. The, the, the materials wise, I think it's, uh, they, they have packed it with fancy materials. Wouldn't call it a boring design either, but uh, not as charming as, as older generation BMW cabins. Not charming, no, not, not as, not as, uh, not as uh, intuitive as previous BMW cabins. Kahing, uh, F10 and removed the badger, so he was asking about uh, what a 300 horsepower car for less than 100k, right? So I asked him to get a 535i and debatch it, debatch the car. Rion Lao 83R, how's the Honda Elysian? Will it be a reliable ride for the family? How about parts availability? Thanks for answering. The Elysian, uh, most mechanical parts should be common with the Accord, but I'm talking, I think the previous generation Accord, but uh part but you if you're talking about things like you know interior trim parts uh lights body panels those uh you will need to do your homework a bit to source them okay uh but there are there are plenty of of good uh, J, uh, jdm parts supplies out there so it won't be an issue it won't be an issue but you can't buy parts of uh of a honda service center lah, that's for sure okay okay Ron jimmy applying for 104k car with 3k net salary. We're talking about the guy who is asking me with a 3k net salary, can he buy a Golf 7 GTI? Uh, I bought my secondhand MyV cash when I was fresh grad, earning just below 5k last time. Not bad, not bad salary for a fresh grad. Then I sold it after two years with high resale value to a direct buyer and used the money for my current new car down payment. Plan your finance a bit more careful and don't end up in bankruptcy. You've got a point. Um, you see, this is, a, this is something that uh, I think a lot of us can take heed of. So let's say like, for example, you, you have a, a dream, you have your dream car. Okay, then you look at your finances and you think however much you stretch your loan, you can't afford it. You just can't afford it based on your current commitments, whatever. Okay. So what do you do? Uh, no problem. What you can do is this dream car that you have here, this dream here, you set it there. And what you do now is you buy something you can afford now. And that is your stepping point. That is your platform that would propel you to one day be able to make that leap and attain your dream car okay so um and actually when you are at this stage okay when you are at this stage this is what the chinese say you ride on a cow to look for a horse this stepping stone here uh you don't be too choosy about this get something that retains its value as best as it can okay so let's say that right now today you spend uh let's say like right now the car price is thirty five thousand ringgit pop three years down the road you still sell it for for 28 30 32 or even better sell it back at thirty five thousand ringgit that is then a perfect stepping stone okay for you then to attain your dream car because in this two or three year period you, whatever that you this dream car that you're looking at has also depreciated okay so it, it, the the gap becomes closer and of course this goes without saying that as you start your journey here all right you have to work your way up so that th that this dream here 
becomes more and more attainable for you. Okay, so uh, yeah, actually this is good advice. And uh, I would advise is I, I would my advice for you is with a three K salary right now. Either you go for a Mark Six Golf GTI with your with a much lower budget, or what you can do is set a budget of say thirty k. Get something like uh, get something like a three year old persona like what I used to drive, or or get something like a, a previous gen persona, right? One of those things. Drive it use it for the next two three years sell it for more or less the same amount of money all right that is your down payment that is your down payment to advance to your next car because you see the thing is that okay you probably still have, at 30 40k you still probably have to take loan right but here's the thing when you take loan on a used car your depreciation is less so chances are what happens is this is your depreciation curve this is your repayment curve then by the time when you sell the car you have cash to take back rather than you have to top up money to the bank to take your car away okay yeah so uh akjw asked me about Ask me to comment about the pros and cons between regular financing and, and models like Mercedes Agility Financing. Well, I'm not a finance expert, so don't take my word for it. Okay, but one thing about Mercedes, all these Mercedes, Mercedes Agility Financing packages is that you will pay higher installments because their interest is higher and they are not under bank Nagara control. Okay. Uh, also what more also the thing is that about the, the, the attractive thing about a Mercedes agility financing also because they are not not, not under bank Nagara control right so uh, people with let's say like you are and this is very applicable for say you are noodle seller fishball seller wedgie seller you make good money every month but you your income statement is not as complete as how the bank would like it. Mercedes financing for you. Okay. Um, and uh, the agility financing package. One thing also is that it is, it is an attainable way to get you into a Mercedes. So what happens is you sign a contract for let's say like three years. But end of three years, what happens? You either give the car back to them you can trade in your car and get a contract for sign a new contract for another car or continue the contract with your current car or you buy the car out from them it means that whatever is it that the balance of the car's value you pay them you get the car it's yours okay now a lot of people will say ah, you, the about option one is when you return the car Okay, so when you return the car, so you have just spent three years paying few thousand ringgit installment every month, then pop, you just return the car to them, that's it, done. Now, a lot of people cannot bring this kind of concept because, huh, I paid installment for so many years, I don't get any money back. Ah. But think about this, a lot of people, if you take a nine-year loan, you pay your installment for three years, right? After that, your, your resale value is less than your bank balance. So and what happened? You have to pay money to the bank just so that you can sell your car. Versus this one, you just give your car back without any hassle. Okay, so uh, it's uh, there. Are, yeah, there are pros and cons. I would say, right? Uh, um, well, I would suppose if you're looking at long-term ownership, you want to one day have the car under your name then you still have to finance it with the bank lah. okay but if you're the type that regularly change car right every three four years you want to upgrade to the newest right then this agility financing thing is something that you may want to look into zara shot zalfi tree uh this is continuing from earlier question but i found a 2017 m4 competition for 368k and a 2018 mustang gt for 339k on muda which would be a better choice for me? Single, no kids, 
F80 M3 was fine, but since I found an M4 competition and the Mustang GT4, 51k less than the M3, not having a dilemma, which is better. But before I start to answer uh, Zaki Salani, please take the M4, bro. Handling characteristic for Mustang is not that great. Hmm. Zaki Salani, yeah, I made up my mind going to go for the M4. Besides, BMW's build quality and reliability much better, not to mention cheaper Rotex. All correct. All valid points. If you talk about sheer speed handling, the M4 will drive way better than the Mustang. It will outhandle the Mustang. Interior build quality also is better than the Mustang. Uh, but the only thing is, uh, oh yeah, and of course, uh, cheaper road tax, way cheaper road tax. Three liter versus five liter. Okay, one is two thousand, one is five figures. But the thing is, when you drive your M4 competition past Bangsa Village, past Pavilion, the people walking by, right, will not be able to tell your car from the 428i that's just parked opposite there. Unless it's a car guy, lah, okay? But everybody turns their head around and look at a Mustang. And if the sight of the car does not turn their heads, the sound of that V8 will turn their heads. So in this comparison, the M4 is, if you look at it from a purely logical, practical standpoint, yes, the M4 is the, the more sensible choice. But the Mustang GT has a way higher cool factor. Okay, so yeah, uh, that's all the questions I be I I have for today's video. Uh, yeah, so guys, as uh, as before, stay home, stay safe. Uh, yes, the MCO is eased off; they are loosening restrictions, but it doesn't mean we have to go out. It's just that we can go to work if we need to. Okay, so for those of you guys, um who badly need to go to work, who need to put food on the table. Uh, hope this uh, loosening of the MCO will allow you guys some breathing room, okay? Uh, it's tough times, all right? It is really tough times. Um, yeah, so those of you guys who have to go out, uh, go out, do it responsibly, all right? And uh, hopefully we won't have another spike of outbreaks of infections that will lead us to another two or three weeks of mco and you know further drag on our limbo period okay and also think about the well-being of our frontliner staff okay uh they are they are probably exhausted you know every day put sleeping on their ppe drenched in sweat and all that it hurts it, it really aches my heart just to imagine them going through that. So uh, we won't want them to go through too long a period of this, even though uh, the common wisdom now is that we are in this for a long run. We are talking about, we will probably be talking about a year or two before, before we fully, uh, before we can even talk of proper, you know, worldwide recovery. Okay, but, um, but we will pull through this. I'm sure we'll pull through this. Okay, yep. So guys, stay safe and uh, take care. Okay, good health to everybody.
Oke, okay, kamu main slipper kan? Kamu main slipper? Ya. Kamu main this one? No, 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 correct, correct. Oke, okay, kamu, let's go. Ya. Yeah. 